So this woman who has not been seen before is forget me not. And she hiked the long trail when I was out there as well with her husband, Ted, and their son, Jeff. And she's come to join us for a few days. We've just passed the 700 mile marker and we're getting ready to go up to Dragon's Tooth and we're waking it up what I suppose the terrain is going to be like for the next few miles. Lots of scrambles. These are the ledges before Dragon Tooth. We just left our packs behind and we're going down a tenth of a mile Blue Blaze to Dragon's Tooth, which is part of, which I did not know, the Virginia Triple Crown. So for the Virginia Triple Crown, we will hit over the next day uh, between today and tomorrow. It is Dragon Tooth, McAfee Knob, and Tinker Cliffs. Those are the, the trifecta. So we're on our way now to the first of the three. But without. tooth well. Cushy life navigating the dragon's tooth. Oh, I didn't look at how mighty blue did this. Shimmying. This is shimmying the dragon's tooth. I think getting down is going to be harder than getting up. Don't you think? Yeah, no, I'm good. I, was, I guess I just started thinking too fast about how to get down. This is the Dragon's Tooth party, I'd say. Yeah. We're all chilling and getting cell phone coverage at the most beautiful spot of... Yeah. <laughs> Hikers looking at their phones. <laughs> so Leighton coming down from Dragon's Tooth and he has lived here all his life and look, he has the most adorable puppy, Ella, and she just wants to play with Forget-Me-Not. That's so fun. But you just told us a really neat story about how the trail's been rerouted through here. Yes. Um, when you're coming off of Dragon's Tooth, um, about halfway between Dragon's Tooth and 624, the trail actually used to come down straight off the mountain and through my grandmother's property where people could uh, replenish their water at the spring. Um, but locals kind of made a mess of the property over the weekend, uh, on, we on weekends, and uh, due to the having to clean up excessive mess, uh, my grandmother gave them the property you see now, so they rerouted the end around the end of the property. That's so neat. It's such yeah. a neat history. It's amazing every year how the trail changes by a couple of miles, and we never know exactly where those miles were or yes. why. And this it's this a perfect change example. took place. Um, late 70s, early 80s. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. That's really neat. Thanks for sharing that piece of history. I thank appreciate you. it. What yeah. was your mother, grandmother's name? Uh, Mary Hodges. Mary Hodges. So yep. she's who we have to thank for this beautiful yeah. stretch yeah. of trail. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> thank Layton. Nice. Yep. Lunch break. And we're uh, soaking feet. Not get this opportunity in a while. And trying to talk Trigger into slowing down a little bit because he has been racing ahead of us this morning. He's going to get to shelter and just sit there all by himself. And hopefully talk to your wife because there might be cell phone coverage. That usually doesn't happen. Get my dinner started. Get your dinner started. That's the important part, right? We gotta get up early. What time are we getting up? Four. We're getting up at four? four. What time are we leaving camp? Five. Five. <laughs> That's early, you're right. That's early. But if we want to see the sunrise on McAfee Knob. I hope the sunrise doesn't come up behind you. Or anything. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that'd be kind of silly if we got there for sunrise and it's coming, coming up. It's At least the sky good. will be pretty colors one way or the yeah, other, really. right? Because they say it's good for sunset and sunrise, so... You should be able to... Maybe it's pointed due north or something and you get it... it's got a, like a 
270 degree sight. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if you can see these black and purple butterflies at this mountain peak. They're about five or six just now. They're just everywhere, fluttering about. It keeps going in and out of picture, but fabulous. And we're hearing thunder rumbles in the distance. Wow. Oh, there they are. I guess if you hold still long enough. I got a fan. Poor Ugg is just, the heat <laughs> is just hitting him, but you know what? That's priceless. A man with a fan. A man with a fan is a man for me. There you go. Good job, uh, good job taking care of yourself. It's a, uh, it's hot out in those fields. It is hot now, yeah. yeah. And that uphill as well. There's yeah. trail magic. <laughs> Yay. Ah. Oh. Oh, you guys are the best. Thank you. Solar is washing his socks. Wait, can you just pull the socks out so we can see the water? Oh, just the water? Yeah, just thought, oh my gosh, that is amazing. Wow. We really get dirty out here, but Solar, I think you take the cake. I think oh, you've you gone can... to a whole new level. You got to see in it. Like, it's even, like, even in it? Yeah. Tell me about the best trail magic you've ever had. The best trail magic we've ever had was in the Grayson Highlands. And it was really cold and we were freezing and wet and it was like 30 degrees out. And uh, we got to the trailhead to go down to Massey Gap to go do laundry and the Highlands store owner wasn't answering his phone. So this couple came up and they were like, you want some trail magic? We have cold drinks, it'd be awesome. We were like, yeah, sure, we're trying to get to the general store. and. Um, they were like, oh, we'll take you there. So we walked down to their car and they couldn't fit us all in the car. So they take one trip, drop me and General off. And uh, they go back and pick up uh, Evergreen and cans and cake and bring them. And Evergreen walks in the front door of the General store. And he's like almost in tears. And he's like, guys, they just offered to buy us a room for the night, which was amazing because we weren't trying to stay because we're poor. <laughs> and. Uh, we got to stay warm and uh, made dinner and it was awesome. And the day before you guys had camped at like 10 o'clock in the morning and not gotten out of your tents because you yeah. didn't have any place to go and it was freezing. Yeah, was we were miserable. at Thomas Knob and uh, we were, there was like three inches of water on the trail. The trail was a river and um, it was windy and lightning and thunder and we were there for like 20 hours <laughs> just trying to stay just warm. Just trying to stay warm. Yeah. Oh, I love that story. People are so good. <laughs> and you notice it on the trail. It's yeah. magic. Yeah, it is so did. magical. That's